In this video, I'm going to communicate with a car ECU uh, using a Raspberry Pi and an ODB um, connector. So this is the ECU I'm going to communicate with, and it's a BMW Mini R53 ECU, uh, which is made by Siemens. Uh, and I'm going to use it, uh, com communicate via this ODB cable. And this ODB cable has a, a chip in it called an Elm 327, and they're quite common. And you can get these cables for about five pounds, or you can get a Bluetooth adapter uh, instead for about five pounds. Again, containing one of these Elm 327 chips. Uh, and the Elm 327 chip makes it really easy to communicate with a car ECU uh, straight from a serial port on a, on a computer. And in, in this case, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi, uh, which is about 30, 30 pound computer. Um, I'm going to communicate to the Raspberry Pi via a secure shell uh, in order that I can capture the con what I'm typing in on a console and then put it into this video. Uh, and then the final part of this is I've got my emulator here for like a car. So I've got some variable resistance on here so I can adjust things like the coolant temperature uh, and it, it just signals um, things like ignition coils and things like that. I've got the ignition switch here. It's run off of 12 volts and that supplies the car ECU with 12 volts as well. So if I turn on the ignition switch now, because I'm going to need it on for when I communicate with it. And some of the LEDs uh, light up just to show um, current status of some of the lines. So I'm in my secure shell session on my Raspberry Pi. Uh, now this can be any Linux um, computer, so it doesn't need to be a Raspberry Pi. Um, and I'm not going to do any programming in this video. I'm just going to use a terminal emulator called Minicom. So you need to be in a root um, console, a uh, root login session. Uh, and if you type apt-get install Minicom, because Minicom is the name of the, uh, of the terminal I'm, I'm going to use. Now it's already installed on here, so it's, it'll tell me it's already installed. Uh, but you need to be, uh, you need to either sudo uh, the Minicom uh, command or actually run Minicom in a root session because it needs uh, access to the, um, the serial port in order to work. The first thing that needs to be done uh, when you come into the Minicom is you need to configure it uh, for the communication with the serial, uh, the OBD uh, device. Now, mine is on a serial port, which is here. It's a rather long name, uh, but when you plug yours in, you'll see under the dev directory and serial, and then by ID, and you'll you'll see a name of, of it. If you uh, unplug unplug it, look in this directory, and then plug it in and look in the directory again, you should uh, identify what the name of it is, of the lead that you've got. Uh, and that needs to be configured here. So in order to configure, you hold down control and press A, and then you release control and A, and just press Z by itself. And you go into uh, the configuration options. Now if you press the O key, that will take you into a uh, configuration menu. And then use cursor keys to go down. Uh, and if you go to serial port setup, and you press A, and you'll be able to enter the, the device name that you're using there. Uh, I won't re-enter it because it's such a long, such a long name for this. Uh, and then you press E, uh, and you need to change some of the settings in here. So you need to um, press D to select 38400, uh, and then most of the other stuff should be set already. Uh, you you need um, Q to set eight n eight bits, no parity, and one stop bit. Uh, and then the thing you need to uh, turn off um, is uh, hardware shape control, and that's not in this menu, I don't think. So if I come, if I hit enter to come out, uh, oh there, there it is, uh, it's F. So F F is normally on, so it normally says yes. But if you press F and to make sure that hardware flow control is off and software flow control is off, and that hit, hit enter to come out of there. Uh, and then in screen and keyboard, um, you need to turn on add line feed. So press P to turn on add line feed. Press enter. And then save setup as DFL. So the default. Uh, so then, then when you come in again, it will be automatically be as your default setting. So I go down to exit, press exit. Now I'm just going to come out of the terminal now. So I recommend, because I don't think it won't really apply those properly, this terminal for some reason, unless you come out and go back in. So if you hold down control and press A, and then press Z, uh, and then press Q to quit, and uh, leave uh, without reset, hit enter. Uh, and then just uh, type Minicom again and go back in, and you should be ready to communicate now with all, all the settings correct. 
Okay, so as soon as you open the terminal, uh, you should be connected to OBD device uh, and be uh, ready to run commands. Now, the, the uh, some of the commands which you should communicate with the to the Elm three two seven chip, uh, like modem commands. Uh, so in, in the olden days, when you had modems to dial up over the over telephone lines, you used to have these apt commands. And so the, the Elm device actually responds to that type of command itself. Uh, so if you type at and Z, and you'll get this response uh, where it tells me that I've, I'm on the Elm 327 device and it's version 1.3a, which is quite an old version. This is quite an old, I've had this lead for a long time. Uh, but that shows that it's communicating okay and, and the, all the communication settings are, are fine. And there's a few other commands uh, that I'll go over just some there's there's quite a few commands that the Elm device has but I'll just go over a, a few of the basic info ones so if you type uh, at and then an amp like an at sign and one it tells you uh, what the actual device uh, actually does uh, and then if you type at an RV it tells you the voltage that it's detecting which is coming from the uh, OBD connector And if you type at and DP, it tells you the protocol. So when, when you start to communicate with this, with the Elm chip, this is the protocol which will try and communicate with the, uh, to the, um, the actual car ECU. So it'll, it'll try this protocol first. And this is just the way that mine's set up. Uh, and otherwise it will try auto. Um, and so it should try auto by default uh, with the way it's configured. Uh, but so that's just communicating with the Elm device so far. We haven't actually sent anything to the ECU yet. So what I've sent so far uh, are communications with just the Elm device itself. We haven't sent anything directly to the ECU yet. So the ECU is unaware that that we're here. Um, so if I now just type some hex digits zero nine zero two, which requests the VIN number of the vehicle, and it should respond back. Uh, and so it's going to send back the, the VIN number of the vehicle. Uh, and the responses are have a particular format. So because I've sent 09 there, it adds a 4 at the beginning and returns 9 to say that it's returning a response to the command you, which is the mode uh, byte, which is 9. And it responds 4, 9 to say it's responding to that. And then the next digit, it, it repeats the uh, PID number, which is the... Uh, the, which identifies what the actual sub uh, command of your, of this particular mode that you're requesting is, which is the VIN number. And then in this particular case, because it's sending back multiple lines, it sends back uh, the line number so you can get them in the right order when you interpret them. And then after the line number, it will actually send, these are, these are ASCII codes for the actual VIN number. And so if I change those into ASCII characters, that would actually be the VIN number of the vehicle, which the issue ECU came, came from. Now the next command I'm going to send is I'm going to request the coolant temperature in the vehicle. So if you send 0105, it was, responds back. And again, 41 is, is response to the, the mode you requested, which is one, and uh, but it puts a four in front of it. Uh, and then 05 is a, a, the PID ID, which um, it's responding to, which is 05. And 30 is actually the coolant temperature. But remember, this is in hex, so I'm just going to go into the calculator over here. And if I go into hex mode and type 30, and then I go into decimal mode, uh, that, that's the actual decimal value. Uh, but uh, what you have to do here is because um, temperatures can be negative, you actually have to subtract 40 from, from the value to get the actual temperature. So that's 8 degrees C. But what I can do is on my actual rig, I can turn the control which... Um, sets the uh, coolant temperature. If I go 0105 again, it comes back as a, a different value now that I've turned that, that control. So if I go 0105 again, because I haven't turned it, um, it comes back with um, 29 again. So that's a, that's a way of getting the, uh, the engine temperature. Now there's lots and lots of codes for getting back loads and loads of information, which I won't cover in this video. These are just a couple of examples, um, just to get give the idea of how uh, you can get uh, data back from the ECU. Now the last example I'm going to give in this video is how to get back the trouble codes for the ECU and that's just uh, you just type 03 to get back the trouble codes well uh, 
and this, it sends back the trouble codes as um, double digits. So these second ones, are, they're not trouble codes, uh, but this first one is a trouble code, which is in the which is in the car, in the ECU. Uh, and you interpret this uh, trouble code, and I'll just bring this across. So the first digit, which is a, so I've got 1692, so the first digit one uh, converts here on this table to P1 manufactured defined. So the actual trouble code, uh, if you if you saw it um, on a lookup table uh, of trouble codes, would be P1, I'm just typing this, I'm not, not gonna send this to the actual ECU, uh, 692 so that's how it would be how you would interpret that trouble code coming back from the ECU 1692 becomes P1692 because the first digit you have to translate using this table so it might might come back as a zero in which case it'd be powertrain codes which are defined by a, an SAE standard uh, just to give the give, give an idea of how that's done okay so now uh, because um, I don't want to send that. I just hit return just to make sure that uh, just to make sure that when I entered that rubbish data, it's, it's cleared out now. Uh, but the last thing you can do is you can reset the trouble code. So if you type zero four and hit return, that will clear the trouble codes from the uh, ECU. Now, because I the trouble code that I was getting was uh, because uh, it was to do with throttle position sensor because I haven't connected the throttle position sensor on this ECU. So if I get the trouble codes again. Um, which is zero three, uh, it will return the same trouble code because I can't clear that trouble code uh, because it's uh, it's the throttle position sensor isn't present. So this video was just really to show how to communicate with uh, an engine ECU um, using a, one of these OBD cables and uh, Raspberry Pi uh, and it's just a, a terminal emulation program, not having to use any programming at all. Uh, in later videos, I'm going to actually write some programs to make this communication a lot easier and hopefully uh, create some kind of application which, which can be used to um, uh, show engine management values.